we are set connecting to the cloud and recording and thank you everyone welcome uh to the i guess this is now the third of the dental peers webinars tonight's webinar is entitled don't let a pandemic interfere with improving your business so before i get into the formal introductions of our wonderful guests this evening just a couple of housekeeping measures to go over Thank you everyone so far. You're doing great on making sure that your microphones are muted and that your cameras are off. I'm sure we have all been part of different webinars and large group meetings where someone has not muted their microphone and that can be a, just a tad distracting. So um, I really appreciate everyone sort of complying with that. If you do have any questions anywhere along the lines for Linda or Nancy, by all means, just send them along in the chat function. I'm here. I'm. Uh, they're kind of used to me being a cruise director and a moderator and everything like that. So, I will be, uh, you know, able to pass along any questions that you may have for them to be able to discuss. We are recording the session this evening, so it will be made available to you for you to watch at your leisure at a later time. If there's anything that you would like to kind of go over and and see something that was a, a particular interesting point you want to rehash and learn more a little about and try to remember what was said. So by all means, we're excited about that. And we did something a little different as well this evening. Um, these are usually things that we've done exclusively for members of dental peers. Tonight, I've also invited a number of our suppliers and service providers because I thought there's some great information that Linda and Nancy will be able to share that I think would benefit them, that they could pass along to some of the dentists that they touch base with and work with. And perhaps that would be something where they'll look at dental peers and think maybe that's an organization they wanna be part of. And if the more we grow, of course, the more we can do for you in terms of the services we can offer to all of our members. So welcome to them. Um, and let me then, without further ado, get into a little bit about who it is we are going to be hearing from this evening. So I'm really excited because these are absolutely wonderful people that I've gotten to know over the last three years, four years, I guess, um, with through our Golden Girls, Dent, uh, Golden Girls of Dentistry cruises, where, as many of you know, I am obviously not gender qualified for, but I get to be the cruise director and help out and, and uh, we get to have a great time together. So the first presenter that we are going to be introducing tonight is Nancy Clark Crossan. So Nancy brings over three decades of dental industry experience and wisdom to the dental community and she is, a, is an established catalyst and advocate and has long worked to encourage dentists and dental team to reach their level of success through the power of collaboration, brainstorming, and of course, teamwork. Now, she has a keen sense of fair play as well as a burning desire to level the playing field. And because of that, she also, and because of the fact that she also really keeps her finger on the pulse of the dental industry, Nancy noticed that there was definitely a need to create and offer an unparalleled option for the large number of the dental community, 70% 7 of the dentists out there who perhaps though they might benefit from the experience and wisdom of a dental consultant, still do not engage the services of such consultants. Yet, of course, their desire to achieve organizational excellence remains strong. Now, Nancy believes that too often improvement strategies tend to fade over time because of the hard issues of implementation and, of course, the soft issues of resistance to change. It's her goal to be able to support, inspire, and, of course, encourage dentists and their teams to take action and move forward towards their next level of success. And I emphasize there because it's about keeping it personal. One of the ways that she's been able to do this is through her development of a great tool that we are going to be discussing in a little more detail later on, and that is called the DIY Digital Consulting Program. Now, the DIY program offers tools of the trade and a step-by-step -step how to process for long lasting results. Now, Nancy has been sharing her wisdom, her experience, her ideas, and of course, her enthusiasm, both one-on-one -on -one and in large and small team settings throughout her entire career. And she's currently committed, as, she, as we said, to leveling that playing field and servicing dental consultants through her comprehensive DIY digital consulting program in your office, in your time, and in your way. So Nancy from upstate New York today, thanks for joining us. 
Thank you for having me, Sean. Well, I don't think, I think I can get off now because you've said everything I could possibly say <laughs> in the introduction. Goodbye, everyone. It's been great meeting you. <laughs> but uh, thank you and thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting uh, Linda. We're, we're thrilled to be here. Well, and, and now let's talk about our second presenter, a woman that I am sure many of you are familiar with, uh, to a large extent needs no introduction, the wonderful Linda Miles. Now, Linda is an internationally recognized consultant, speaker, and author on dental practice management and team development. She has been a successful businesswoman who's not only was the founder of Linda Miles and Associates, which was a leading dental management consulting firm that she established in 1978, but she also founded the Speaking Consulting Network in 1997, something that I got to experience my first taste of in Kansas City in 2019. And oh, wouldn't we love to be able to experience those kind of get togethers again. <laughs> <laughs> now, Linda sold those two businesses in 2007 and 2010, respectively, in order to devote more time to something that's really become a passionate cause of hers, and that's the Oral Cancer Cause, which is a Florida-based nonprofit that saves lives by creating awareness of early stage head and neck cancer. And I'm sure many of you have seen on social media, Linda and maybe some of her other colleagues blowing bubbles for those who can't. <laughs> That's a big part of what oral cancer uh, awareness has done through the oral cancer cause to create and generate more awareness about the, the problem and the issue of oral cancer. This is something that she co-founded in 2013 with the also wonderful Robin Morrison. And oral cancer cause not only raises awareness but provides financial assistance to oral cancer patients who are undergoing medical procedures and can't eat, speak, or work. In 2016, Linda, along with Dr. Tanya Brown, co-founded the Ultimate Team Mastery, which is an online virtual classroom for practices that wish to keep their teams on the cutting edge of management and communication skills, but don't wish to travel and take days out of their practices in order to do so. She, now, as I said, Linda is a well-recognized international speaker, We've had the pleasure of having her speak in Canada, although it's probably been a while, but she has spoken in Canada. She's spoken in all 50 states in the United States. She's authored four books, mentored many other de dental consultants, and has been working with Nancy Cross and on the DIY digital consulting program, and has been a great, which has been a great addition to Linda's retirement projects because kind of like my mom, everyone knowing my mom, Eileen, their retirement might look a little bit different from that of a lot of other people. <laughs> but they're, they're, one thing that both my mom, Eileen and Linda share and have, a, have in common is a passion that keeps them involved in the profession of dentistry, something that they have loved and been dedicated to for 55 plus years. So Linda, desperately wanting to get down to Florida to warm weather, but stuck in a chillier Ohio. Thank you for joining us. Well, you're welcome. I'm delighted to be part of this uh, exciting evening, Sean. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we are, of course, excited to have you. So um, lots of stuff going on, of course, both in Canada and the United States, you know, depending upon where we're located up here in Canada, I can tell you, especially here in Ottawa, we're in what we're calling one of the hot zones in, in, in Canada, where unfortunately the second wave of, of COVID-19 has definitely, uh, definitely taken hold. Um, some areas of the country can be a little bit better, but we are seeing more and more of them with going in the wrong direction, unfortunately, right now. How are things going in your areas in the States right now? Well, in Florida, you know, there was a, a big outbreak in the spring with the beaches and so forth. But I just read an article yesterday that 27 states are back into, you know, being classified as the most dangerous. Thank goodness Florida was not on that list. So even though, and it's interesting, it's not on the news, but they're 100% capacity, have been, and have had fewer outbreaks. But you won't hear that on the news, typically, because, you know, the news, the media, 
you know, if there's a hurricane, uh, they have a picture of one little 98 pound uh, newscaster that's about to be blown off the beach. And they show that and scare people to death all over the world. And I believe that COVID is a very serious, serious uh, virus. But I also believe that a lot of the good news is kind of swept under the covers and there's a lot more fear-based going on. For sure. And Nancy, how about in your area in New York? Yeah, well, uh, both of my daughters live in New York. So of course they've seen the absolute worst of it back in April and May. Um, they've lost friends and these are, these are young people. Uh, for me, I'm in the Hudson Valley and I just checked the stats. So Hudson Valley, my county, we have 300,000 people and we have 152 cases. So I feel particularly safe, but I have all the while because I do the simple things that we can do. Mm -hmm. and so I, I, it, it, it's, it's very good here and I do feel very safe. Good. Now, as, as far as dentists, if, I, if you want to speak about them, I have my maintenance clients and they're actually doing very, very well. They're having their best quarter, their best months. But what I'd like to say about them is that, is that what they built before COVID is why they're doing so well now. Because People are afraid to go to the dentist. Thank you, World Health Organization. Uh, thank you to these organizations that have undone what we've worked so hard to do. We have stressed and pressed prevention, you know, and it's been proven, okay, that the prevention works. And now you have people that are so afraid to go to the dentist. And that is, that, that's very sad. I feel very badly about it. I think dentists have taken a hit because of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've been doing certain things before COVID, then your, your uh, patients feel comfortable. If, if they trusted you before, and if the dentist kept communication with their patients, they have a full schedule. They are completely booked. If you are a practice that spoke about the, the mouth body connection, if that was you and you educated your patients that way, okay, now, okay, they understand that if I have an infection, then possibly my immune, my immune system is compromised. So I want to go to the dentist. I want to take care of myself. I want to prevent. So the things that needed to happen, I think we all scrambled around to make sure we had the PPE. Everyone did that. But if you had a good foundation, just like the mouth, just like the bone, the gums. If you had the good foundation, I believe those are the dentists who have not been very badly hurt by this. For sure. And I know myself, like when I've been talking to some of my colleagues up here in Canada, the one with respect to issues regarding infection control, one of the things that I've always maintained is that, you know, if you were really adhering to the infection control protocols that, that were mandated and your, your various provincial societies asked you to conform with, you were you know, ball, ballpark 90 to 95% of the way there in yes. terms of protecting your patients. Yes, COVID did require a few tweaks. There's no two ways about that, but it probably wouldn't have been that dramatic a change if we were really playing ball and most dentists were. The issue, of course, as you've said, is making sure that our patients are aware of this. So when we talk about that, what are we seeing down from what your observations have been, Linda, about what's been working for dentists in the pandemic? What, what is, what's been consistent in the strategies that have really helped get them through um, the period of times that they were shut down and, and, and helping them to perhaps get through as we start to see this second wave developing? Well, the first and, and primary has been communication. You know, they had to furlough their team members, they were closed, but communicating with their team, many of the smart ones set up Zoom meetings, they still continued to talk positively. Uh, you know, when the when the leader is positive, the team is positive, the patients are positive. But when the leader shuts down and talks gloom and doom and spreads that to the team. These are the dentists who are now suffering because their team members, those that were close to retiring have retired. And those with small children at home that didn't have a babysitter stayed home, collected unemployment. So one of the biggest issues was keeping in touch with patients through uh, the, you know, 
uh, sending emails and notices that we're working, we miss you, we're working diligently to get back on track as soon as we have a green light. And those are the ones Nancy's talking about that hit the ground running and are having their best months ever catching up with all the back preventive care and all of the back basic restorative and some of the bigger cases are moving forward. And we weren't sure how that was going to go because so many people's financial situation has been affected. But it's amazing to watch those that were prepared and to feel sorry for the ones who were not prepared. And the bottom line in everything in dentistry has always been good communication. And it says it with uh, a, a gold star in these pandemic times. And Nancy, anything different from what you've observed in your areas? No, Linda's absolutely right. Communication, that's what these practices have done. They've communicated with their patients. They've communicated with their team. Communication is key. And it's not just key for COVID-19 and this, and, and this time frame that we're in. It's, it's, it's most important for leadership. Leadership and communication go together. And like Linda said, when the head, when the top person, okay, when the dentist exudes positivity, and they support the team and they and they have a common goal for instance when was the last time i'll ask when was the last time that a dentist had a meeting laying out their vision their mission their goals their philosophy and i bet a lot of dentists haven't done that now let's take covid-19 off the table let's say it's not now that's that's leadership that's what we need to do. And what am I saying? When was the last time we had a meeting? That's communication. So communicating is so important. And when, the when you communicate with the team, they feel important. They know you need them. And the team does not want to disappoint the dentist. They truly don't. If they trust you and you've given them support and you've supported who they are, who they are as a human being, they will do everything for you. So I may have segued a little bit, okay, from our COVID situation, but the big picture as Linda is alluding to about communication is again about leadership. And it's not that difficult. I know that almost everything that goes wrong, we hear consultants say, oh, the dentist isn't a leader, uh, it's a leadership problem. And, and that may be, but it's not that difficult to be a leader. You can take a book a year, uh, uh, 1936, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. There's not a lot that has changed. Take that and read it for a year and you will be a different person than you are from today. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey. Take that book, take a year, read two books during the year and a person's leadership skills will change because they really, the leadership skills is about working on yourself. And- I agree, yeah. You know. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes the challenge that I encounter and maybe you see it as well when talking to dentists, we, we know from a lot of the studies and profiles of, of the, 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 the professionals in the community that a number of them can be introverted by nature. And their thought when you get talking to them about some of the complications and that are going on in their practice, if it's underperforming and what they need to do to step up, and they'll always give me some sort of a statement along the lines of, I don't know how to do that. I'm not a leader. And I have, and you have to try to get across to them is that leaders aren't always those, you know, those people that are, are loud and dynamic and, and forceful. Leadership can happen in the most subtle of ways. Leadership can happen by the people that are the quietest, but they're the ones that show that they care. One of the yeah. ways that I said you can show the greatest leadership with, especially during some of these Zoom meetings that you had to have with your team while we were shut down, start off, don't dive right into the meeting. Go through with a little round table with every team member and just for two minutes, how are things in your world? Mm -hmm. If there's something that happened that was great that could be celebrated that the whole team can celebrate, great. If it was a tough week for somebody, you know, you can share that and we can understand I, that kind of a check-in. That's mm -hmm. leadership. It is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said, John. You know, yeah. I, I, I'd like to say two things. I had two thoughts as you were saying that. One is 
uh, that many, many leaders are leaders by default. Dentists went to dental school to become a dentist, to spend their time caring for a patient in the treatment room. That's really what they want to do. That's their passion. That's their love. So they're leaders by default. So the second piece is I'm an introvert or I'm an extrovert. And you know, I just read this word. I get word of the day, dictionary word of the day. And about a week ago, a word came in and it said ambivert. And I said, oh my goodness, that's me. Sometimes I'm an extrovert and sometimes I'm an introvert. I, I just like labels very much, but that ambivert was so good. And don't you know, today I saw it from our um, past president of the ADMC, Laura Jameson, and she posted that. Yes. Ambivert. And I think a lot of us fall it, it, right into that category. You don't have to be one or the other. And you're so right. Just be, just be, just talk to a person. Like, how are you doing, Sean? How was your day? Thank you for doing something that goes such a long way. I think we've put so much pressure on people to be leaders, and that's kind of scary. Gee, I'm not a leader. That it's not. Tr it's really not that difficult. You can pick up a leadership book or listen to a, a, a great um, podcast on leadership. And I also think I, I'm, I'm guilty of this. We overwhelm ourselves with information, mm -hmm. uh, information overload. And there's so much coming in and it's so fast. And last year I decided I'm going to pick up just two books instead of, I, I read nine books at a time. They're open everywhere. I read, it's, it's crazy. I'm gonna read two books and I'm going to master those books. And so get rid of all the clutter, find the two good books, concentrate on that, focus on that because what we focus on happens. So I, that, that's what I think that we don't have to be scared of this word leadership. You, most people, you know, most dentists have become leaders by default and there's trainable skills. We can learn leadership if the desire is there. Absolutely. Now, you both kind of touched upon something that I wanted to, to get into a little bit, and that was the idea that, you know, those dentists that had sort of set the table for themselves long before we ever knew that COVID was going to be a thing, they've really, they, they've bounced back pretty well, right? And, and we talked about this a little bit the other day. A lot of the times, uh, let's focus not just on COVID response. Let's just make your business run better, because mm -hmm. if it runs better, by default, you will be better off in, in the face of a crisis. But that's not all businesses, you know, whether it's dentistry or anything else. Sometimes some people just didn't do that. But have you seen as a result of COVID, perhaps some dentists with thinking that, boy, this is something I really should have been paying attention to. And what do I need to do now to have a little bit more of a focus in what I have to look after from the business end of things? Linda, Linda, can you go ahead? Well, I, I'll go ahead, I'll, Nancy. Oh, no, no, Linda, please. Oh, you okay. Go and then I'll go. We can both answer it. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the four basic things that I used to talk about for years, and I, I really believe I built my entire consulting on that, was number one, we've already talked about, and that's communication. And communication within a dental practice happens with patients, with team members, team members to team members in a multi-doctor practice. The doctors must communicate and everyone must communicate with patients. And each position is a different skill set as far as the person that is the financial coordinator and the treatment coordinator. One presents the clinical, one presents the, uh, the financials. And so it's a different conversation, but it still has to be very patient focused and they have to be well skilled in their position. The second is to be highly organized. And we've all heard that systems make the practice go. Well, everything is a system, whether uh, we uh, the way we uh, greet a patient when they walk through the front door, the way we hand a patient off to the dentist clinically, the way we check the patient out, that is a system. And I've worked in practices as a team member years ago where there were no systems and it was helter skelter. And in the very last practice, everything was like an orchestra. 
orchestra and the doctor was just like the one that just led the orchestra and it was because we had communication we had team meetings he was an a leader before leadership was even a word I believe it was so long ago that I practiced in a practice and uh, the third is uh, uh, motivation and that goes a long way how you feel when you walk through the door in the morning is how you do your job. And so many times people come in with a long face, they come in, they bring all their personal problems. We all have personal problems, but we have to be totally patient-centered, patient-focused throughout the day, and we have to be highly motivated. And motivation is a gift we give ourselves. When you wake up in the morning, if you say, oh, I'm so tired, I had a terrible night, oh, I have a headache, what you say is what you get. So there have been many, many days you have to fake it till you make it. <laughs> and I honestly believe that motivation filters again from the leader to the, pay, to the team and how the patients are motivated is how much the team is motivated. So when we say to the doctor, you can't come in and just be in a bad mood. This is your business. It's part of your business to lead the team in feeling we're going to have a great day no matter what happens. And, you know, uh, we have curved balls in dentistry all day long from morning till night. And how you deal with that is going to determine the end of the day results as far as net income. And the fourth is appreciation. And I think that appreciation for our doctor, appreciation for the team, appreciation for our coworkers, and certainly appreciation for the patient. And those are the four things, as far as I always taught, were the foundational things that every practice had to have. Communication, organization, motivation, and the art of appreciation. And if you look at the first letter of all four words, what does it spell? Coma. And that's what the practice or business is in without it. I love that. I love that. So you can that's steal awesome. that if you want. It's out there. It's <laughs> great. I love it. And, and you know, it's really 25% of all four of those things that really makes a successful business, whether it's dentistry, retail, a hotel. Have you ever been served by a waiter that loves their job? You enjoy your meal. Have you ever been served by someone who hates their job? You can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I know, and just sort of thinking of that, you know, I'm uh, as I listen to you discuss that, Linda, I'm sort of thinking, just imagine being that patient sitting in the chair about to have this dentist come at them with the drill and the whole host of other sharp instruments. I had a lousy night's sleep. I had a fight with my <laughs> spouse. My kids were a nightmare this morning. I'm in a terrible mood. It's like, I might reschedule that appointment. <laughs> Let me add to you. <laughs> what can you add? What were your foundational principles? Oh, were you speaking to me, Lynn? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I said, well, yeah, well I, I wanted to go I'll back. Anything off? Yep, yep. That, no, I, 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 everything you have to say is so important, Linda. You're, you're, you're the queen, the queen <laughs> of consulting. Really, I, I'm just the side, queen, I'm just yeah. a sidekick here. I'm okay. only speaking this much because Linda is allowing it. <laughs> Listen to you all day. So go ahead. But uh, I, I wanted to go back to um, what Sean started with. What he, I think you were alluding to, have dentists hope that they've done something differently. They ended up in a, in a situation where no one ever expected. Did they have um, enough cash to get them through? Of course, we had the loans. Those weren't always easy to get. Did they, did they have the cash? Could they make it through? And now that they're in this situation, could they have done something differently? And I do believe that many dentists feel that had they had those systems and protocols like Linda is talking about in place, it could have been a smoother transition because now you take the foundation, what you already have, and you build on that. It's the same exact thinking as what we were saying, the dentist who had built up the trust, who had made the mouth body connection and educated the patient that way. So I do believe that dentists are much more interested now that the 
emergency of PPEs and all that is over, that they do want to say, you know what, I can't predict the future, but I can plan a little better for it. And, and that would be a natural way to think about it. Anyone who's hit a rough spot, you say, oh, gee, you know, what could I have done that maybe I would have gotten through a little bit easier? So yes, I believe that dentists have been thinking that way. I think they thought that way, but everything was going all right. You know, money was coming in, you're paying the bills, everything was going fine. And now we're thinking, oh boy, I don't know. We better prepare. Maybe this pandemic isn't going to happen once every 100 years now, as, as we're hearing from the scientists. So yes, I, I think that dentists want to prepare better. They can prepare better. And I actually feel it's fairly, relatively easy to do that. Are we, do you think we're going to get more of that positive response or, you know, of course, we, we saw the article and it made the rounds up here in Canada as well that came out, was it yesterday oh. or the day before from the USA Today, saying how, you know, dentists are leaving family practice, whether they're retiring or selling to the, to the corporate world. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I'm always one to say from the standpoint of, of, of deciding to go corporate, there, there can be good things if that's where you are at your, that stage of your life, but take the time to analyze and decide if that's really the right for decision for you, or are you making that decision because you're fearful? And, you know, that, that, that article certainly, certainly brought a lot of fear-based aspects to the conversation. It are did. we seeing more of that or are we seeing more positivity, do you think? Uh, may, I, may I mention yeah. something that, that I, I also saw the article and who's to say that someone leading a dental corporation didn't come up with the story? You know, when I read something, I think even a bad review in a dental practice, I wonder if it's a competitor. I wonder if it's somebody that had a bad experience with a team member or the doctor. I wonder if it could be, you know, uh, who, who knows? All I can say is the dentist that I still talk to, and believe it or not, I still talk to quite a few, uh, they are private practice. They are doing very well. Uh, the corporations are, every business is down somewhat from last year, but uh, they're going on as, in, in my opinion, business as usual. And I just really believe that it's, um, it's a scare tactic again of hyped up media. Yeah, uh, but, but regardless of media, I want to take that piece out because people have so many you know, so much negative energy about media. I think that fear is a motivator. I think that fear is a motivator and sometimes it can be a good motivator. Sean and I talked about this. Sean wrote a fantastic article about fear and making decisions based on that. That's not gonna be helpful. This fear that's out there now is very, very negative. It's very divisive. And I think it's time to st stop. We have had a global shift not just Americans, not just the dental field, a global shift and time to actually pause and stop and be self-aware and what brings me joy and where do I feel high energy levels. You don't have to be a rocket science. You don't have to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You just need to stop, pause and really listen to yourself how you feel. So when I'm, when I'm speaking about trust and love and communication and clarity and unity, I have, a high, I have a high vibration. When I start to talk about fear, I can feel it. I can feel it in my body. And all of us have that capacity to stop. We've been forced to stop, to pause and to find out what works, out, what works best for us. I believe there are dentists and they're learning this coming right out of dental school. They don't want to be involved with HR problems. They, they want to come in, do the dentistry that they want to do and leave. No worries. They're willing to take a lesser salary. It's, it's a common knowledge that millennials prefer experiences over money. Not that money's not important. So the world is shifting and we've all been forced 
to stop, to pause, and to see where our vibrations are and to be honest with ourselves. If you know your vibration is low, you know you're going to be pulling some people down with you. <laughs> that's for sure. And if it's your team, that's not going to be good. If for no other reason, it's because how it affects the energy and the atmosphere in your practice to your patients. And the bottom so, line. Yeah, I, 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 I think that there's a lot of fear out there and it's up to us on an individual basis to know when you're starting to feel that and to stop it. Just, it's almost like saying, cancel, cancel, stop. We've all been, we've all been put in time out, Sean. Yes, yes, Linda, <laughs> that's exactly right. But now the question is to use that time, time out productively. Pardon? Pardon? I said, now the issue is to be able to use that time out productively. Exactly. That's right, have we learned anything in the time out box? Yeah. But look how close I think what you were starting to done. ask before, Sean, have yeah. we learned anything? Will we do anything differently? So when when we're looking at some of these offices, and it can be it can be the fear that you know my team is leaving because communication was poor. Maybe my team is, you know, we're seeing a lot of situations where uh, if I want to keep a team member, boy, I'm going to really have to up their salary right now, because that's just kind of where the, the market is falling. All these kinds of things, which are promoting a lot of fear amongst people within the dental community. How are we advising them to sort of take a deep breath, stop and reflect and think for a moment, don't just react, and then come out with an actual plan. What, do you, what are you saying to them? Linda? Who goes first, me? Or sure, well, Linda, I why don't you start first? <laughs> I've, got, I've got a plan, so, but I, I let Linda speak about it, but I've got a plan as far as business fundamentals. So that Linda, I believe uh, that there's a word called thinning the herd. And uh, I believe that dentists have taken a look at their practices. They've taken a look at their loyalty from each individual team member. And I believe that they're willing to reward uh, loyalty and hard work. And they're not going to deal with the ones that had a, you, you know, in, in every practice, some of them have jobs and a paycheck and others have careers. They're going to keep the career-minded, loyal employees, pay them even more possibly, possibly have fewer, and they're going to get rid of the hangers-on. Yeah. And streamline their business. Yeah, streamline. I did the same thing in my own consulting business. In 1999, I had lower disc surgery and I had a team of 11 people. I had 65000 a year in rent. And I took a look at my own business and I did a huge overhaul. I called it right sizing. And I think a lot of the private practices are doing just that. They're taking a look at what they enjoy doing the most, who they enjoy working with, what type of patients they enjoy attracting. And they're going to focus more on the 20% that generate 80% of the work and 80% of the profit, and they're going to get rid of the rest. Yeah. And, and Linda, what you just said is exactly what we're talking about. You had a back surgery. You were forced to stop. And it, it was, was a gift. gift. It was and, a gift. I would yes. not be here tonight if I'd have kept traveling 18 days a month to support this wonderful but large animal I created. Mm -hmm. And it was tough because I had all 11 great people. So for me to reduce the team from 11 to four, and it was tough. But you know what? We increased our fees. We uh, reduced my days to five a month instead of 15. And our profits were the same. And you got and that monkey. I, and I gave that. everybody six months to find another job. And I helped them find other jobs. Yep. Because yep. they were all great people. It was tough, but it was a blessing. We're in that position now with COVID. Yes. We have been forced to stop. Yeah, forced stop, to stop. Take a look, reevaluate. Having and that was what in the eighties, Linda. Having 99, an 1999. 
$65,000 annual rent. That's a monkey on your back. Oh, it so, was. So again, Linda streamlined. I mean, I, Linda and I weren't planning on talking about this at all. It just happened to be that we actually <laughs> sort of fits it. in with a thinning of the herd. Yes. And, the, and Nancy, I'd love your plan as far as Sean's question, I think, was how do you deal with the dentists who are being asked for more money, perhaps because they are staying on? Did you want to expound on that? Yeah, I, I have spoken to dentists who feel they're being held hostage uh -huh. and they resent it. And again, that's about, let's go back to the communication and the loyalty and the trustworthiness and, and, and team members not wanting to disappoint their dentist. They wouldn't be holding the hostage. They wouldn't be holding the dentist hostage if there wasn't some underlying matters going on. They'd be involved and say, how can I help? How can I support you? I'll do anything I need to do. These are your career people. Now, if, okay, if it just so happens that they haven't had a raise in years, that's another story, but let's put that aside. It's what was created before all this happened. So now the people who are holding the dentist hostage, which is a horrible thing, and they feel they have to pay them because they cannot lose another team member. There's team members who didn't come back, who retired. So it, we're, we're, in a, we're in a particularly challenging time, but I think it's again a gift because we get to see who everybody really is. We had this conversation uh, today with um, uh, with a friend of mine, and I said, "Have you ever?" Uh, and don't get me wrong, long term employees. The longer my team members were with me, the more valuable they became to the company and to me personally. But if you have a person on your team who wants to hold the boss hostage and demand this, it's an extortion of sorts. And I said, have you ever had two cans of Play-Doh and you know, you have a new can of Play-Doh and it's pliable and it's soft and it's moldable and it's fun to play with it and it even smells good, but you give me a can of old Play-Doh that is hard and crusty <laughs> and thinks they know everything and demands this and demands that. I'd be putting that can of Play-Doh on the shelf real fast, putting it in the dumpster real fast. So, you know, I've met those people, Nancy, that you're talking about that want to hold the boss hostage and demand this and demand that. And it's just not fair to the business owner. And it's just something I wouldn't deal with. And so many of them, as you said, are running scared I give me a couple of new people with great attitudes. I'll give them the tools like DIY, dental, digital consulting program, and I'd have them up and running because to me in hiring, attitude is everything. Personality should blend with the team that we have and their appearance. Are they neat in appearance? Because that's how people do their work. So attitude, personality, and appearance, we can teach the skills. A absolutely, a absolutely, and I and I look at it and I think you know there is that element for sure. You know, there's always unfortunately bad apples in in every barrel, and then there are times when you know the apples had a lot of good potential, but but maybe whoever was the one putting them in the barrel just tossed them in rather than actually placing them in gently. And sometimes you know, some I, I look at it and I think. There have been a number of dentists who, when the shoe was on the other foot, unfortunately, weren't always kindest to their team. Right. And sometimes those team members are now saying, oh, now's my opportunity to get mine. So <laughs> that key is that leadership that we've been talking about and that ability to really be able to empathize and be the, 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 the dental leader that steps up. And, yeah. and now how do we help them and encourage them? I mean, we're, you know, we know what we've talked about the fact that for some, they were doing a great job with this before. They've always been, for whatever reason, they've, they've understood how important it's been for them to be yeah. successful, that they step up and show their team and their patients that we are all in this together. And they were doing it long before we'd ever heard of COVID. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a, a bunch of dentists, I think, that maybe weren't, weren't terribly bad, but they just didn't pay attention to these sort of things. You know, those, those ones that coasted along, times mm -hmm. where they were able to, to, to do okay without having to worry about these things, but they're motivated now. 
they see yeah. the difference. They maybe they're seeing how some of their colleagues have gotten through this. They're doing okay, but their some of their colleagues are doing better. Yeah, and they want a taste of that, but they just don't know how they're going to do to to go that route. And and you know they're thinking, okay, can I afford a consultant at this time? Where are we going? What what's the solutions for them? Well, so, I think I'm just kidding. Oh, Liz, I think that you can, can uh, attest to this, that a lot of consultants, their business right now has dried up. The dentist cannot afford to pay $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, dollars They cannot afford to pay it, yet they do want to improve and they have had an awakening. And there are alternatives. But uh, uh, Linda, I'm sorry, I interrupted uh, you. I was going to say, Sean, I can give them four words. And if they will do these four words and say these four words, there's two sets of four words here. Um, I can assure you that they'll have their team members jumping through hoops till midnight, walking on hot coals for the patients <laughs> and the practice. And the four words of empowerment for any dentist or employer to say to their employees, I need your help. Four words of empowerment. I need your help. And I was so excited the first time my former employer that I learned everything from in 1976 to 80, uh, he said to the four of his team members, he had a startup practice and he said, ladies, I don't have all the answers. I need your help. Man alive, we would do anything to help his practice because he expressed that we might be smart. And I had never had an employer that even asked my opinion, much less said they need our help. Yeah. So we had team meetings, we had an incentive bonus plan. I didn't even know what an incentive bonus plan was. And when he first mentioned it, I went home and said to my husband, he mentioned something about an incentive plan. And I've heard the wind blow before. That was my exact exact words and I didn't really believe in his style of management but he had all of his team members and his patients were excited about being in his practice because he was a very excited excited uh, business owner but the other four words that Nancy and I firmly believe in is hire them train them trust them and praise them and if any of those four are not there you're not going to have the leadership that you need and the team you want. So that hire acronym them, is ETP. Hire <laughs> them, train them, trust them, and praise them. And it absolutely makes one. I, I really don't believe that team members, I believe that every team member really would love to be a superstar and do things well, but they don't know how. They don't have the training. And sadly, the dentist who has never done their job has no idea how to train them to do it. Exactly. It's, it's actually very frightening. Yeah. And that's where, and that's where this program, uh, the DIY digital dental consulting program comes in. This is a program that consultants bring in to practices minus the personal one-on-one -on -one interviews with team members. So this is what we do when we go into offices and we had this idea Linda's not going to practices anymore, neither am I. I have some a couple of maintenance clients that what would, well, you know, what would happen if we were able to give this program, an online program to every dentist who wanted to improve and we could give it to them at an affordable price, which is 1995. That's affordable. When Linda saw this, she said, Nancy, this is crazy because doctors will pay a lot more for this. But this was, this was our swan song kind of our gift. And it's a soup to nuts consulting program. It starts with leadership. It has to start with leadership. And we go through a discovery process, discovery one, discovery two. Discovery one is where the doctor uncovers their mission, their goals, their philosophy, so that they can bring that on board. That's their true north and bring it to their team. 
discovery. Nancy, too. the one thing that you have figured out that none of us, including yours truly, who is probably the oldest consultant next to my friend Eileen Pierce in the world, and uh, we were the grandmothers of it, she in Canada and I in the U.S., but uh, the one thing Nancy Crossan has figured out that none of us really figured out is we all told the dentist, you need a mission, you need a purpose, you need a philosophy, you need your team to be on board with it. But we never gave them examples and an outline of exactly fill in the blanks, make it your own, it's downloadable, it's customizable. And so the whole key is why did consultants have to go back year after year after year to onboard the new employees is because they didn't have the tools left behind that the DIY is. So not to belabor that because we don't want this to be a commercial for DIY, but we do want people to know there is a solution to the gap that is out there. 70% of the practices that don't work with an in-office consultant. Nancy and I do believe that in-office coaching is the absolute best. We did it for 35 years. We believe it's the best, but as she said, not everybody at this point in their practice can afford it. And not all consultants want to travel. You can do this digitally. You can do it online. In your own way, in your, in your own time, the indispensable piece of this is that it's completely customizable. And discovery too, I'll finish with that piece because it's so important. That's when the dentist brings the team on board and that's when the magic happens because the, the team actually creates, they customize this program that's 47,000 words. It's, it's a program that we've given everything. As Linda says, we created a feast, you make it your meal and you customize it. So bringing the team on board and allowing them to have a say and to help co-create and customize it, they will support what they create. Because Sean, do you like to be told what to do? <laughs> yes, I love it all the time. Ask your wife. <laughs> Is your wife on this? Is your wife on this call, Sean? <laughs> Anyway, nobody likes to be told what to do. And this is a program that they do it together. And I'll just- And the coaches are together. there for them. The affiliates are there. So any consultant, any coach can present this to their clients. And so it's just an amazing, I told Nancy when I first saw it, Nancy, why are you giving it away for 1995? It's everything from A to Z, sample letters, sample hundreds of marketing ideas. It's just amazing. I said, it's worth $30,000 and uh, it is, but- uh, I wanted to remove every obstacle. I yeah. wanted to remove every obstacle. If cost is the obstacle, then it's not an obstacle anymore. If you don't want to do it, that's up to you. But I, I couldn't hear anymore that we can't afford to improve or reach our next level because of money. Because that had to just be put by the wayside. So now yeah. that's not even an issue. So it's, it's, um, it's a program that especially at this time now, it's the business fundamentals. Get your bells and whistles at some other point, but have the foundation healthy and strong and build on it. So that's, 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 what, that's what we did. Linda's been the advisor uh, every step of the way. And um, she, all she did was make it like a million times better. So I am grateful. I'm grateful to you, Sean and Eileen for being, for being the representatives in Canada or international representatives. Thank you very much. And um, thanks for having us. Well, Piers oh. Dental, Piers Dental has always been on the forefront. Uh, yes. I think I came to Ottawa and spoke, gosh, 30 years ago, Sean, you were probably not born yet, but anyway. Oh, I'm a little older than 30. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so we're thrilled you're a part of our affiliate team. And uh, yeah. Sean, we kind of got off track, but what about other questions you might have, have for us? Oh no! I mean, we. I think the track has gone gone extremely well. I, I like the 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 way the conversation has gone. Um, I, I was sort of thinking, you know, Nancy, as I was listening to you speak, and and we know that 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 cost is whether it's in dentistry, um, in any in any area, cost is always going to be an objection that that gets raised, and and I think that that you've certainly come up with a solution that addresses that as well as can possibly be addressed. Um, 
improving my business takes time. And I know that we certainly, like you've said, we've had a lot of time on our hands, um, but maybe for some dentists now, you know, maybe there's been a little bit less because uh, some of them have been pretty successful at bouncing back. Um, those are certainly the ones who were, were in a good, generally speaking, in a good space business-wise beforehand. Um, but the other aspect that often happens from those that are, are in a panicked phase is I don't have the time. You know, everything, everything is about if I take that time, that's time away from having a patient in my chair, someone that's paying me money, how do I deal with the time to do this? And whether it's working one-on-one -on -one with a consultant or bringing a consultant in for the team, whether it's doing something through online program or whether it's a DIY type of a solution. How uh oh. Sean, we yeah. we didn't hear the rest of this because yeah. you froze for a moment. But oh. what I'd like to do is let Linda answer that question because Linda's been Linda's been teaching this for a long, long time. And she, one of the things she says is most dentists work in their business and not on their business. And then she lays out a plan: how many hours you have to have to dedicate time to improve. If you bring a consultant in at $55,000, you still have to create the time to work on the program. So if you're not willing to give any time at all to improve, there's, you know, that's, that's a choice. But I, I believe that time. every dental practice should have a two hour weekly team meeting. And if you can devote eight hours a month, when I used to talk about this in my seminars, and the dentist would punch the staff member next door and say, did she say two hours a week? That is a day, a month of lost production because that's how analyticals think. And I said to the audience, it's not a day, a month of lost production. It's a 30% increase in gross production with about 25% falling to the bottom line. So uh, my clients who listened and believed and trusted that particular idea, they were on fire for growth. And the average client went up a quarter of a million dollars. And when I look at what my fee was back in the day for the difference, if I would have said, pay me 10% um, of, uh, of your income, uh, I would be retired and living in the French Riviera right now <laughs> because some of them went up 500,000 in 12 months if they were a two or three doctor practice. So anyway, they have to take the time to digest a section at a time. And Nancy has it laid out yep. in such a way that it is actually just like uh, follow the, you know, follow the numbers. It's so easy to implement but it does take time. And each member of the dental team must help with the section that is pertaining to them, like the clinical assistance section, the hygiene section. And it's just an amazing program. So if anyone would like to have a one hour demo, Nancy would love to set that up with Peer uh, Dental and, uh, we'll, we'll and place offer it to anybody in Canada, all the yep. consultants who might be listening, yes. all of your clients, yes. and just take a look at it. You have to see it to really believe it. And, and I want to go back to something Linda said, because she's talking about the two hours a week. But I believe that Linda may have been the first consultant back in the 80s. If there's somebody else... I, I don't know their names. She'd say work smarter, not harder. And she encouraged her practices to work a four day work week. They couldn't, they, they didn't know how that would happen. They didn't, but they trusted her. They said, well, we've hired a consultant. Let's do what she said. And they have been even more successful Okay, then allowing so much more time. Right now, today might be a little different. We're going to take this blip in time and, and we may, may need to do some different things, but work smarter, not harder was Linda's mantra. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and to enjoy life outside the practice. You know, in order to remain happy with your work, you have to balance your life. You really do. Yeah, you absolutely do. 
Linda, I certainly share that philosophy that your team meetings need to be two hours. You can't possibly hold an effective meeting in that one hour of lunchtime that so many dentists try to cram it in. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it, you're treating patients till 12 noon mm -hmm. and the meeting's going to start at 12. Well, no, it's not because we now have patients that are still maybe they, mm -hmm. they're five minutes late. So they're not out of the operatory yet. So now those people have to wash up and clean their operatories and then get their lunch and bring it in. And they're showing up to the meeting late. And then by 10 to 1, maybe they're still physically in the meeting room, but they're already starting. Mentally gone. Absolutely. You're freezing again, Sean. <laughs> That's a good pose right there. <laughs> what, is the, what is that Madonna song? Strike a pose? He's striking a pose. We'll see if we can uh, fill in a little bit till we get you back, Sean. <laughs> yes, uh, one of the things that I recommended uh, is to uh, have a chart, you, you know, you a, a, large, a large tablet, an easel, or a computer screen with a, if you have a large screen in your staff lounge, and uh, work on three projects at a time. Uh, I think it's a good idea if you go to a course or you attend a webinar, is each team member is on a charge to bring back their two or three best ideas that they learn. So they're constantly listening and because they're on a mission to bring something back. So when a doctor gives them CE and they don't bring anything back, they were daydreaming. And so everybody lists their two best ideas and then they create what we call uh, to-do list and they work on an easy to implement, maybe it's the way we change the way we present the fee for larger cases and or they might uh, have something that takes a week to implement, uh, a new inventory control system working with their dental supply rep or a, it could be a year long project or a six month project or a three month project updated, dating our website. So they have a, an easy, a medium, and a large project, and they break it down into uh, parts of the project. And, and you can't complete a project without a, uh, a name beside each step of each project and ask that person, by what date will that be complete? Yes. So that's how you get little projects, medium projects, big projects. Everybody volunteers for a step of the project. Okay, well, we are at, it's, believe it or not, it's already 8.05. Time flies when you're having such a, a, a lot of fun and a great conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we did entitle this, uh, this meeting to don't let a pandemic interfere with your improving your business. So um, just a closing thought in terms of a golden nugget of advice on that front from each of you. Maybe Nancy, do you want to start us off with one there? Yes, I think it's very important to make sure that you have earmarked the right people for the right position and they will help the dentist implement. And I would like to recommend a book called Rocket Fuel, The Visionary and the Implementer. And together, that's a very powerful combination. Excellent. Linda, closing thoughts on that. My closing thought is dentistry should be fun, exciting, and rewarding for patients, doctors, and team members. And when it isn't fun anymore, you need to hire a coach or order the DIY. <laughs> John. Linda and Nancy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate you taking time out of your schedules to, to be here in, in this uh, evening as, as we head in towards bit by bit cooler, cooler times ahead and, uh, and, and challenging times ahead for sure. I think we're all going to be experiencing that whether we're in, in the States or up here in Canada. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity that we've had to get to know each other as friends and to, to work. And if there's people out there that are interested in learning a little bit more about what the DIY digital consulting idea is all about, you know, um, by all means, reach out to Nancy, Linda, myself. I'd certainly be happy. We have a Facebook page. We've got, we've got DIY a Facebook dental page. Dental Consulting, the website, DIY Dental Consulting. But we'll put the baton in your hands, Sean. 
because you are the representative and you what whatever works best for your dentist, that's what we'll do. Excellent. And thank so, you for having us, Sean. You are an amazing person. What a wonderful host. It's so easy to speak to you. It's you're you're a pleasure. You you serve so many people. You Linda always says there's two kinds of people. There's givers and takers, and you're a giver, Sean. Thank you. Thank and you he so should much. have his own TV show. <laughs> I think I think if you have connections up there, you should interview dental folks. <laughs> and have your own dental channel. <laughs> <laughs> now, how popular a channel would that be? I don't know. Well, you can invite us and we'll make it a party. I, I was kind of jealous, Nancy. He's sitting there drinking his wine and oh. I thought I'd be professional and have my ice water. It's, it's water in a water. wine glass. It was just water. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, good, good night and, and thank you, Sean. And uh, we, will, uh, we will talk to you soon. And um, Linda, good night. Good Surprise. night and, and have a great uh, weekend, everybody that's on. And yeah. thank you for being on. Thank, yeah. thank, you. thank you. Thank you for the information. It was very interesting. I'll reach out to Sean that maybe I could share your information with um, the dentist that I work with through Sean's uh, and other people that I work with. So Wonderful. Yeah, it's Fantastic. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone for joining us. Have a great night. Don't forget to join us on November 5th. I've got Dr. David Rice and Kevin Henry. I'll That's be it. there. Wow, <laughs> Is that December 5th, did you say? November the oh, 5th, November. exactly. Oh, November. What time, what time, Sean? <laughs> uh, I go, oh my goodness, is it eight o'clock that we booked for that one? I have to confirm the time. Well, that'll be after our affiliate meeting. We'll have to five to seven and I'll be on there for three solid hours. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, okay. okay. Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.